I'm Wim Kruiswijk. I collect messages in bottles from the beach. In 34 years, I collected over 1200 messages in bottles. I have all the time in the world, and instead of talking with other old people, I love to walk on the beach and see the surprises. In 1983, I found three of them, so I wrote them that I was surprised to find these messages. And the other surprise was that I got answers of all three of them. And that's when I decided, okay, I'm a collector of messages in bottles. I find my messages in bottles on the beach of Zandvoort, where I live and on the Dutch islands. Messages in bottles is slow mail. It takes you days, weeks or months to find a bottle. And I don't even on the beach open them. I put them in my rug pack and at home I open them to have a second surprise. This is the German girl, the first letter she wrote me on the 28th of August in 1983. It pleased me to receive your letter. Writing is something you can think about what you're writing. When you're talking with somebody, you're interrupted and getting an answer before you expect it. When you write something, you can write on your own. Nobody is interrupting you. And when you get an answer, I cannot interrupt them. Even when I have been writing only a few times with somebody, I got to know him. And when I'm going through this collection and I see the message, then I remember how much fun we had for a while. This is David Deutschman. This is David Deutschman. That's better. For the last 12 years, David has held over 1,200 babies at Scottish Rite Hospital. Hey David, when can I raise my voice? After the titles appear. At Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, you'll find David volunteering as a baby buddy, a person that spends time holding babies who are delivered prematurely or require special medical attention. When I first came to work for the hospital, they gave me a little baby to hold, and the child life person walked by and said, hey, you hold babies? I've got a job for you. And I just loved it. I became nicknamed by a few nurses as the baby whisperer. All right, buddy. I'd be given a baby who was screaming, crying. You'd be amazed how quickly they can calm down. It's okay. Because the babies stay in the hospital for a long period of time, most parents can't stick around, mainly because their maternity leave runs out or they have other kids at home. That's where David comes in. David has gone on to hold countless babies in the neonatal intensive care unit, providing not only companionship, but other medical benefits as well. Just ask Nurse Angie. We find that holding also can help mitigate some pain. So when our babies have heel sticks done and they're being held, they react so much better than when they're not held. David has done this for so long now. When he takes a baby into his arms, you can see the baby relaxed because David's so relaxed. And so you feel the baby's in good hands. If you're a retiree, I would say to you, get off your butt and do something. Volunteer doing something. And there are a lot of different ways of doing it. it doesn't have to be in a children's hospital. I know it meant a lot to the moms and the dads too, but what it meant for me. I really feel that I'm the one who benefited. Extraordinary Birthdays is an organization that I created to instill self-worth in homeless children on their birthday. When I started, you know, some people said, you know, it's just a birthday, you know. I mean, my God, they need a house. They need this. I'm like, yeah, they need to be recognized, too.
I'm Chanel Leak, and I'm the founder of Extraordinary Birthdays. We go and partner with shelters to provide personalized birthday parties for homeless children. I want every child to feel like their parents ordered this party up. We're just the people that are helping them make it happen. This is a little child. Oh my! That says unicorn all day long, Doesn't right? It? It's like super cute. Since 2010, we have celebrated over 800 kids. I started with one shelter and in 2011, you know, we got another shelter and we are now up to nine shelters and that's in DC, Maryland and Virginia. What? Extraordinary Birthdays is not just me. We have our party planners. They are the heart and soul of EOB because they are planning parties for children they don't know. That is hard to do. Goodie bags. Oh my God. Goodie bags. Now that is over the top. And they're putting all of this together from the plates to the napkins, the tablecloths. They are creating the centerpieces. All of this will be part of that efforts we do into transforming the shelter. One of my greatest joys is their first response when they come in the room. Their expectations are so low that when they come in, they just, they can't believe this party. And we've hit it on the head every single time. So we have this questionnaire that basically asks the children's name, their age, who's coming. We usually say to them, give us three things on your wish list, three things that they want. This is also part of her gift. I didn't bring her other gifts, but I will have them tomorrow because okay. um, they were super huge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy and then we always ask them what kind of cake. <laughs> How awesome is it that we are able to fill that because that's specifically what that child wants. The people that come to the parties are other children in the shelter. When a child is homeless, they're not inviting their friends from school. Their friends from school don't know they live in a shelter. Their friends are in the shelter. So we really are too about building this community it's more about the birthday child, but it's about the culture of those other homeless children too, because they're going away with goodie bags, just like everyone else. And these are things that are speaking to them in quiet ways. Even though it's not their birthday, we are still having some type of impact on that child for that moment. This mother said something so profound to me. She says, when you are homeless, the system reminds you of that every day. She said, my daughter did something normal today. She went to a birthday party. Whoa, cool purse. For that moment, that mom was able to be a mom. So the children get to see their parents as parents and not in a line getting food or, you know, being part of the handout. And that's what I love because I, what I wanted to do is to take the simple concept of a birthday party and disrupt everyone's thinking. Over two billion cups of coffee are consumed every day, and it takes a lot of people to make just one cup. One man went on a quest to figure out what it's like to thank each and every one of them. AJ Jacobs is a writer who lives in New York City. Hi, I'm AJ. And he's the first to admit he can be a bit of a grouch. My default state is grumpiness. I am very good at noticing all the things that go wrong. So to make a change, he started giving thanks during dinner. I would say thank you to everyone who helped make my meal. Until one night. My 10 year old son was like, you know, dad, those people can't hear you. If you really cared, you would go and thank these people in person. And that's when the light bulb went off. He decided to hone in on something he knew he took for granted every day. My morning cup of coffee. Over the next 12 months, AJ set out to thank every single person who had even the smallest role in his morning cup of joe. First, it was his local barista, the roaster, and the coffee shop sourcer. 
Whenever I thanked one person, they would say, well, I couldn't do my job without this person. So one person led to another, led to another, led to another. He ventured outside the city and eventually the country. I thank the folks who provide electricity to the coffee shop, the engineers who provide the water, the people who make the steel, the farmer and the importer, the truck driver the person who paved the road, and even the woman who painted the yellow lines in the road so that my coffee beans could safely arrive at my coffee shop. I remember I called the woman who does pest control for the warehouse, and I said, I know this sounds strange, but I want to thank you for keeping the insects out of my coffee. And she said, well, that does sound strange, but thank you. You know, I don't get a lot of appreciation in my job. All in, AJ ended up thanking over 1,000 different people. And while most were pleasantly surprised by his gratitude, it's AJ who benefited the most. The experience has made me grateful for the hundreds of things that go right every day, as opposed to the three or four that go wrong. I tell my friends that they should try these gratitude trails themselves. It could just be small gestures. Looking someone in the eye, the cashier at the drugstore. It could be sending a quick note to the designer of a logo you love. I will tell you that it will make your life better. It's changed the way I live my life.